Hi, this is Greg Kilstrom. Welcome to the Agile World Podcast, where we discuss customer experience, employee experience, and transformation in an Agile age. The Agile World Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full-stack technology services, talent services, and real-world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed on this show, you can go to my website at theagile.world and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, The Center of Experience, a blueprint for creating an experience-led organization, now available on Amazon and other retailers. My name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm CEO and co-founder of CareerGig and the host of the Agile World podcast. Today, we're going to talk about creating great employee experience in a distributed world. While recent events have drawn extra attention to this, it has always been important for companies of all sizes to be able to work collaboratively across multiple locations, both in offices and remotely. Not only does this uh, need to be seamless and efficient, but it must also create a positive and engaging employee experience in order to be successful. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Amy Ganaway, Vice President, Global Compensation, Benefits, and HRIS at VMware. First, uh, Amy, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you do at VMware? Sure. Thanks for having me on the podcast, Greg. Um, I'm responsible for several HR functions, um, including compensation, benefits, our global people insights team, and HR technology group. But I have to say, I'm most passionate about the opportunities that we have throughout these functions to focus on inclusion and diversity, equitable pay, implementing and leveraging employee technology solutions, in, in fact, including some of VMware's own products, I'm thinking about recognition and well-being. And all of this is really through a lens of leveraging data to connect our work to focus areas that we really think will derive, will drive desired impact for our employees and measurable business outcomes. So overall, it's it's pretty exciting to have my hands in a lot of different uh, functional areas. Wonderful. Well, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to talking with you here. So let's uh, let's start by talking about VMware and how employee experience is approached there. Um, so as one of the top 10 largest software companies in the world, um, VMware has employees and contractors dispersed throughout the globe and a plan to grow up to 50,000 employees over the next several years. Can you talk a little bit about VMware's growth trajectory and what areas there's been to uh, the most growth in from a hiring perspective? Sure. Our growth growth truly has been phenomenal. Less than 10 years ago, we had about 9,000 employees, and today we have well over 30,000 employees globally. And so while our headcount growth has been and will continue to be distributed across numerous geographies and functions, um, one thing I know for sure is that much of it will not be tied to specific flagship office locations. Um, So my guess is that well over half of our hires um, will be in distributed locations, so most likely working from home. And we'll continue to have a robust intern, a new grad hiring program, um, in addition to hiring seasoned professionals um, across the variety of functions where we employ people. And with this focus on hiring the best talent and less office location constraints and changing our mindset around that, I I anticipate that we'll be filling positions faster than we have in the past and with higher caliber and more diverse talent. How has uh, COVID-19 shifted VMware's approach to remote work and, and have there been any lessons learned? Yeah, so we've always had a percentage of our workforce that's working distributed, and I would say a lot of employees that a day or two a month would work from home or work partial days from home. And so we were set up where everyone has a laptop at the company, everyone was able to access the technology that they need. I think what was really different about COVID-19 and the pandemic is it's not really the same thing as everyone just all of a sudden working from home or working distributed. Um, people have all these extra personal burdens um, having to do with the pandemic and dealing with integrating their family life and other people maybe working from their home at the same time. Yeah. Um, so that, I think, has been a, a difference in how we've had to approach and think about supporting our employees. Um So we did everything from um, more regular check-ins with, in terms of all hands meetings, check-in meetings with leaders. Um, We spun up some surveys and found out that what people needed support with was things like a desk or they 
could work a couple days without those big monitors, but they really were missing the monitors to be productive. And so we spun up some programs to give people stipends for office equipment and um, to give them a path to order those extra monitors or the technology equipment that they needed. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I think that was um, a big change that we had to shift to is really equipping people to be more effective for the long haul. And um, then in terms of onboarding new employees, I think that was also something that we were used to well, come on site for your first few days, even if you are a distributed employee. And this all had to be done virtually. And so um, we did that. We facilitated, we've hired over a thousand plus people during the pandemic. And we used our own VMware Workspace One product to really help people get up to speed. Um, And so that's been pretty seamless. We've received um, good feedback from people that we've onboarded. Um, And so I would say Overall, um, very successful, but definitely some fine tuning of things. Um, in addition to offering people 10 days of pandemic leave, so employees can take time off at any time for any reason during this calendar year to support their well being or their families if they're all of a sudden needing to homeschool kids or they, they just need to recharge in general. Um, so that was another way we've tried to help meet people where they are um, in this really strange and different time we're all in. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, one, I mean, being fairly familiar with VMware, um, you know, I think it's interesting. You mentioned the Workspace One product, for instance. It's you. Not only were you, it sounds like you're being very adaptive and with with a lot of different aspects of of employees' lives. You also create some of the products that actually enable that to be uh, to be more successful as well. So I think that's an interesting uh, phenomenon there. Yes, yes, absolutely. And kind of um, ironically, when it felt like the world was slowing down, um, our teams internally that support um, the Workspace One product, things were not settling down from them. Yeah. Um, they were working overtime as other companies who didn't have this technology yet um, really realized overnight that they needed it quickly. And so that's been um, an opportunity for us to really help out and connect with other companies um, that had maybe more hiccups in the road of going virtual um, than VMware has had. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really great that you were able to help out in that way. So, as a um, as a an HR expert and, and and from your perspective, what should companies keep in mind as as COVID continues to be a presence? We don't really have a timeline on you know, things may subside at some point, uh, hopefully, but we don't really have a, a clear gauge on you know when and and how quickly. Um, but you know, will there be a return to normal, or do you think that some things are just changed forever? Right, right. Now, for VMware's industry, software industry, I actually don't think we'll ever return to what we called you know, normal in the past. Um, yeah. So we've done some pulsing surveys, and roughly 80% of our workforce feels that the distributed work model is beneficial to them, as well as the long-term success of VMware. So I think that's an interesting um, data point that they like it and feel like they're they're thriving. Um, it takes t- set aside all of the pandemic co- specific yeah. concerns, um, but my belief is that we'll go back to the practices that served us well in the past that we miss now. Um, for example on-site collaboration, strategy, planning, whether it's quarterly or annual, um, some groups getting together um, to to do a specific project um, or some type of a checkpoint meeting. I think those will still happen. Um, But working full-time in the office for those that thrive in that with that one-on-one personal connection and they prefer not to dedicate space in their homes to an office, which depending on what geography of the world you live in, that can be quite an expensive luxury to have a dedicated space. Um, I think they'll be back in the office. Um, Maybe not five days a week though. Maybe they have uh, you know, a corner of their kitchen they'll work in one day of the week and the other four days they want to come in to, to the office. Um, so just over half of our employees are planning to work from home full time post pandemic. Um, and that's a significant change from what we had prior to the pandemic. I think it probably would have been less than 10%. Um, so to go to half of people saying, this is my new normal, it's working from home distributed and coming in at maybe a few times a year. And then um, over a third want to split their time between home and the office. And so that leaves us with about 10% that say, I'll be back in the office, sign me up, I'll be there five days a week. Um, and yeah, so I wow. don't think we would have predicted data um, this extreme had we just rolled out a, a new program for people to work in a distributed manner if they wanted to um, pre-pandemic. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those things where I forget the exact statistics, but, you know, it takes a certain amount of days or weeks to really form a habit. And I think that's what we're kind of dealing with here, where if this was a, a couple weeks or something of everybody's lives, uh, things would probably return to normal. But it, it does seem like we've been doing things long enough that, you know, real longstanding habits have been formed as well as just economic considerations and, and stuff like that. So I, I wonder... I wonder how much of it is that is just uh, people people have had long enough to just not really they're they're not ready to go back and they're they they form these these habits. Right, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I also think some of the habits that have formed are better work practices that are really inclusive and recognize what it's like for someone to work distributed and me not the person in the room. Um, and yeah. so I think the more that time has gone on, the better we'll ingrain those practices of the virtual meetings and thinking about time zones or the way that we are including people globally. Um, I also think that training might look... Um, different in the future as we've pivoted and all the training is virtually, conferences are virtual. Um, I think there'll be select things where we realize, oh, that didn't quite work as well as the in-person experience. Um, But I think it will be really selective. And so it it will just look different. Um, I think the other thing as the pandemic has really been maybe longer than a lot of us expected at the start is people are now reflecting more on what's important to me Um, what are life changes I need to make to align with my priorities and my values? And interestingly enough, for 10% of our workforce, so, you know, well over 3,000 people, they're planning to physically move in the next six to 12 months, including a large number that plan to move to a different country um, or move to a different state or regional area within their country. And um, I think that is another big change in terms of mindset and people really having this time to reflect and think about what's most important to them. Um, and I think yeah. we were surprised at the number of people that plan to move um, so quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really interesting. Well, let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit here and, and talk about a measurement of employee experience. So, um, you know, when when preparing for this episode, you shared some uh, some of VMware's methods as well as some very compelling numbers that you have on on employee experience. Could you talk a little bit about how VMware measures employee experience and engagement? Sure, sure. And this has evolved over time, but really our overarching strategy around um, data is to focus on providing the right data at the right time to the right audience. So in the context of employee sentiment data, which is really important, um, particularly now, uh, we're moving from a traditional several page long drudgerous annual survey where you then do a big reveal two months later to all the employees um, to a periodic agile and flexible approach using pulsing surveys. And some of these surveys are out to all employees, so the full population, and some we just pick a statistically significant sample or a focused group of employees. For example, if there's a geography of the world where the office is able to reopen and we're surveying about that, we would do that full that full group for a survey like that. And this, this agile format really has allowed us to include timely questions um, in our manager effectiveness surveys, for example, so that our managers could receive real-time data on how their employees feel they're being supported as we move to a distributed working environment. Um, so having this structure kind of in place pre-pandemic has allowed us to pivot be flexible with our questions and use some of the channels we'd already set up to give those give managers that um, feedback so that they can action it and understand um, what is important to their employees at this time. And yeah. we're we're also using the pulsing surveys to really find out um, and plan for the future and. I talked earlier about how many people want to come back to the office full time, how many want to stay working from home post pandemic. And that data has been invaluable as we need to think about physical space planning. Um, What does the setup look like in the offices? This is actually a a good time to um, safely reconfigure offices where it makes sense so that they're more focused on collaboration um, and centers where people would come in to collaborate a day or two a week versus um, specialized offices with high cube walls uh, where people come in really to get their focused work done. I think in the future, people might do that somewhere else and come in with the intention of of working with others. So this survey data really helps us make actionable um, decisions like that. 
Yeah, that's re that's really good. Well, what are you most proud of regarding uh, VMware's employee experience, and and how do you you know what's what's that measurement that you're um, and w what do you do to to make sure it continues to improve? Yeah, absolutely. So VMware has a great culture, and that has remained true throughout the pandemic. Um, in fact, you know, I think our team has in many ways been more connected as we've helped each other through what's been a challenging time for a lot of people. Um, and so, interestingly enough, we do look at ENPS, or Employee Net Promoter Score, as the barometer for how we're doing overall. Um, and that has actually increased over the time of the pandemic. Um, and so it's mm -hmm. interesting to see that um, people have seen VMware as maybe some stability in their life and providing them um, resources to the extent that we can to help them through this um, difficult time. Um, flexibility being probably at the top of the list of things that um, we've provided. I think the other thing in terms of employee experience that a, a lot of companies do is really you want to measure your turnover. Everyone's concerned. You want that to be kind of at a reasonable level and you don't want your critical talent leaving the company. And one thing we are focused on now is really flipping the script kind of away from crying over the spilled milk and instead thinking about um, who are the critical employees right now at this point in the company and the contributions that they're making, the skills that they have that we want to retain um, because they're important for the future. And what type of pulsing surveys data can we use um, to strategically measure um, programs or action plans that we would put in place to make sure we're retaining them um, versus just reacting to a lot of data that we have on how, why just the employees that left in the past, gener just across the board generically, what were the drivers and get more specific um, and more focused on the most impactful um, turnover. Of course, we do care, measure the big reasons why people leave and we measure them on a scale of how important was that factor to you and what, how well did we do? And then we triangulate that and um, look at big opportunity areas that were also important to people that left. Um, so kind of approaching it from the macro level, but then also really looking at um, what's going to be most impactful to the company. Yeah. Are there areas where um, you wish you had some more insights or maybe difficult to measure or, or anything like that that you think might be helpful? Oh, absolutely. We could probably do a whole podcast on that. But, um, employee productivity. I think that's an age old question for the software industry um, and where you have a lot of people with unique one off jobs where at the end of the day, you can't say, well, this is the stack of widgets that I made. This is the you're not counting something that's the same. Um, so other than sales, which, of course, you can count um, some of that productivity, that's hard to get your arms around. Um, another area is really predicting and analyzing why turnover happened. There's so many factors. Um, it's multifaceted. People often are diplomatic, and so they're not going to share the specific reason why they left. And so it's important to triangulate um, data and understand maybe from past pulsing surveys whoa, is the person that leaves on average more frustrated with their manager or are more concerned about X scenario? Or um, in the past, we know that pre-pandemic, our data showed that those that worked in a distributed um, or work from home, they had higher satisfaction um, scores. So it'll be interesting when you have more than half of the company moving yeah. that way, if there's something about that or that was more unique to the type of roles that previously were kind of in, in quotes allowed or encouraged to work distributed. Um, so that's one that's still hard to get your arms around. You could, I think it's a little easier for us um, on the turnover than productivity. Um, and then I would say job skills, competencies. How do, you, how do you measure those on a scale that is helpful to map to succession plans, internal opportunities? How do you source for talent? Um, that that's hard just because you have a label that says you know Java or a label that says um, you're good at statistical analysis. That doesn't mean a lot because we don't have industry-wide standards for that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think if you could wave a magic wand and had great data there, you could do some really, really impactful org planning um, and design. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. What are you, um, what are you most excited about as, as VMware? Sounds like it's on a, on a really good growth trajectory. Uh, what opportunities or areas for growth will this bring? 
Well, I think we have a significant opportunity in front of us to build a more diverse and inclusive team globally. Um, Like I said, if we're looking distributed, the sky's the limit in terms of how you build out your team. And when we're looking to hire, you know, 10,000 plus people in the coming years, um, that's a huge opportunity. Um, The impact, I think, is also um, broader when we're located everywhere, right? So we're better able to empathize empathize, relate with other employees, customers all over the world. Um, Then we're kind of in places where it reflects more of the global community Um, and also more diverse perspectives. I think because we're going to stay fairly distributed, uh, the democratization of ideas, access, less proximity bias that presents us um, huge opportunities to revamp the way we're thinking and be more innovative. Um, And then I think um, continuing to leverage our own product internally to onboard distributed employees through acquisition activity um, and really do that um, effectively as so it allows us to scale where we have the right security in place and um, people are able to be productive right away. I think that's another opportunity for us to use our own product and to partner with companies that are maybe a little bit behind us in terms of how they're approaching some of that automation. Um, so overall, lots of exciting, lots of exciting things in the future, and I think this year will be a year of really reflecting and taking forward a lot of good lessons learned that shape us into the future. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, one last question. Um, in my recent book, uh, The Center of Experience, I talk about how critical it is to unify both employee experience and customer experience into what I call the brand experience. How would you describe the relationship between employee experience and customer experience? And what do you see as your role in relation to customer experience since you're generally on more on the employee side? Right, right. I think it's critical and really important. And um, interestingly, our employees use VMware products every day, directly and indirectly. Um, And so they're using Workspace One that's front and center as a productivity tool for employees. They're using it to securely access, um, especially when we're distributed, it has baked in VPN. So there's not extra steps for that, but they can get their applications, receive notifications, consolidated workflow action items um, that just kind of seamlessly flow to them throughout the day. Um, And I think because all our employees are using our products, it definitely helps us relate to our customers and their experience. And in fact, we have a cross-functional team that implements our own products internally. um, And that team um, provides feedback directly to the product team regarding the experience, roadmap requests. Um, We will meet with prospective customers, other customers to network. And it's just, it's really nice to be a part of um, influencing what your company does for the for customers and um, also being able to use it day in and day out. And I think that really builds um, empathy and it translates to a, directly to a better customer experience. And re- we know research shows that, but it's nice to be able to see that um, firsthand. Um, and then I also see my specific role as supporting employees um, and programs is to really make sure that we're measuring and improving employee engagement um, And that is another connection point. If our employees are more engaged, then they're more likely to have better engaging experience with our external customers. Um, And in the area that we're in, it's nice to be able to support customers, both from a product perspective and then to share best practices kind of in the space of HR or employee program management. And so kind of having that holistic um, relationship um, between the customer and VMware. Yeah. Well, Amy, uh, thanks so much for joining the show. Uh, For those listening, what's the best way for them to keep up with what you're doing? Sure. I think the best way to connect with me is on LinkedIn. Um, So my last name is Ganaway with two N's. Um, So Amy Ganaway, the the only one in HR on LinkedIn. Um, So find me there, reach out, send a note. I'd love to connect and be in touch. Great. Well, again, I'd like to thank Amy Ganaway, Vice President, Global Compensation, Benefits, and HRIS at VMware for joining the show. To learn more about both customer and employee experience, I recommend you go to my website at gregkilstrom.com and make sure to check out my latest book, The Center of Experience. More information is available on my website or wherever the book is available, like Amazon. Thanks again for listening to The Agile World with Greg Kilstrom. See you next week. Thanks again for listening to The Agile World podcast brought to you by Tech Systems. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom. You can learn more and get a copy of my latest book, the center of experience from my website at theagile.world or on Amazon or other retailers. Until next week, stay agile.